ability to score from anywhere. A lot of people that can beat you. Uh, defensively, they're going to be very aggressive. They have really good athletes. They have good size and speed. And so you know, we have our, our hands full this week coming up with a, a great game plan on both sides of the ball and uh, being able to move on from – from last week uh, quickly. We, we kind of put that to rest yesterday, had a good practice last night, and then we'll get back to, uh, to our normal uh, weekly grind uh, this afternoon with a padded practice. So a uh, big week ahead for our guys. Get started with Scott Fritchen. Yeah, hey, Chris. Um, Skyler was on the verge of reaching 5,000 career passing yards and 1,000 yards rushing and that's rare among k-state quarterbacks and i guess my question is um what impresses you most about skyler how have you seen him grow and what makes him a dangerous quarterback well for starters he's got a great competitive spirit uh and uh, he competes his tail off hates to lose um, uh, studies the game uh, wants to continue to push himself wants to learn more doesn't feel like he has it figured out, knows that he can continue to improve. Uh, everybody knows he has a really accurate arm, uh, throws the ball really well. And, and he's done some things with his, with his legs over the last year plus uh, with some things that Coach Mess and the offensive staff has, have designed for him that I think really emphasize his strength uh, of, of running, not only on the perimeter with some of the option stuff, but running some of the inside inside stuff off of, off of kind of our power sweep uh, package. So uh, he continues to improve. He continues to, to challenge himself because he knows he can be better. And so I, I didn't know where he was at on some of those milestones, but uh, uh, well-earned. Um, you have the question, Joe Kleinerman's defense has already produced four interceptions. That's the most by a K-State team in a decade to start out the first two games of the season. What has pleased you most with the ability for K-State to get interceptions so far? Well, without question, uh, on Saturday, it was the difference uh, to be able to create uh, the four takeaways. Plus, we stopped them once on a fourth down and had a block punt, so it's almost like six takeaways. We have to be able to do that. Um, we have to be able to be an opportunistic defense when when the ball's up in the air. We have to be able to, you know, some of those tip balls and stuff, a lot of times those go incomplete. Find a way to catch those. Uh, some of the overthrows, like the last one with J-Mac, you got to find a way to catch those. Plus, you know, being able to strip the ball with a big hit like, like uh, J-Mac had is big. But uh, uh, pleased with all the defensive staff. We really emphasize it during during the week. Um, and the kids are, are making some plays. Now, we have to continue to improve uh, across the board on defense, but I, I liked how we progressed as that game went on. Thank you, Chris. Good luck. Yeah. Kellis? Uh, Chris, sorry to start off with this as usual, but just how many guys who were missing from the OU game would you anticipate might be available this week? Not many, maybe two, maybe one or two, because they caught on the back end of it. So I'm guessing one or two. Um, that, I didn't get that fully yet from Mindy and Matt. Um, nobody has come back yet to practice. Nobody was back there yesterday. So we have to work with the guys that were at OU. Knock on wood, we didn't lose anybody on Sunday. Um, so everybody that was on the trip is still, uh, still available. Uh, but uh, uh, I don't have the exact numbers. I'm hopeful we get – a couple back, but I know we're not getting substantial amount of numbers back now. Okay. And um, you got the benefit of playing with three players who you didn't really have in the opener or had very little of in the opener with Christian Duffy, Jerron McPherson, and then also Khalid Duke. Uh, can you help me out and just break down what you liked about what those guys gave you on Saturday? Well, Duff was slated to be a starter, and I thought he'd had a really good summer and fall camp, even though it was abbreviated. And, and uh, we need Duff to be an exceptional player for us. And um, Duff played well. I think he's going to continue to play better. He's a young player that's uh, not had a ton of uh, experience. So I, I'm looking forward to seeing how he progresses throughout the year. Uh, Khalid Duke's a very, very special talent, and uh, I think a lot of people saw that. Uh, he makes – uh, the interior guy's better because he can rush the passer. He makes Wyatt better because he can rush the passer, plays the run really well. He's about 25 pounds heavier than what he was last year, uh, still very explosive. And then, you know, in, in the secondary, uh, J-Mac is uh, a playmaker. 
Uh, we've moved him around, as you guys know. I mean, he started at nickel for us all last year. We had him in fall camp mostly at free safety because of some issues with COVID. He had to play uh, strong safety, and and he's going to continue to move around for us. But uh, he's an impact guy um, on and off the field, and and was really happy for J Mac because his hard work has paid off. And one one more for you. As that game went on, how did you think you uh, really got to Spencer Radler and made him? Through, make some mistakes that he didn't make in, in their first game. All the credit goes to the defensive line and to Coach Wyatt and, and to Coach Tui. Um, we were able to rush four uh, and put him in some uncomfortable situations. Our coverage uh, was better as the game went on. The kids were starting to recognize some of the routes and, and be a little tighter in the coverage. But uh, all the credit goes to those defensive linemen and the defensive line coaches. Um, because we didn't have to bring five or six. And when we did, he made us pay. Uh, and we were able to, to rush four and, and, and get a number of hits on him and get some critical sacks, especially late. John Kurtz. Yeah, Chris, for the offense, how far do you feel like you guys have come in a year in terms of being able to create explosive plays? And, and what do you attribute that most to? Well, we were, had a bunch of explosive plays on Saturday. We'd like to continue that, uh, that's for sure. Uh, we needed the explosive play on Saturday because uh, we were struggling to sustain drives against a, a very fast and, and aggressive Oklahoma defense. So uh, we have a number of playmakers, which is exciting for Coach Mess and the offensive staff to be able to get the ball in a number of people's hands. And um, we know that we have to continue to bounce the ball around and get it to different people. Uh, but uh, I just think – Utilizing the players we have, guys in, being in the system a little bit, even though we've missed some time, just understanding the concepts, understanding the schemes, understanding what the coaches are looking for. Uh, and then Skyler realizing the matchups. I mean, that's what football's kind of become uh, as far as when you spread people out, what's the matchup? Is it a linebacker on a running back? Is it a linebacker on a wide receiver? Is it a safety on a tight end? Um, and if as Skyler continues to progress and play like he did on Saturday and he sees those matchups, you know, it's really difficult. Um, we had Deuce one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, uh, made a big play. We had Keon Mosey one-on-one -on -one with a linebacker, and, and it was a big play. And, and those things um, kind of happened by design as well. When you have Deuce playing the way that he is, how tough of a balance is it between not overloading him with too much and at the same time getting the ball in his hands quite a bit? Well, we don't worry about overloading him. He's a really intelligent young man and understands the game of football. Um, but we also know that uh, we have a number of other guys that are that are, we're going to continue to have that as kind of a running back by committee. Um, we were down a couple of guys. Everybody could see that uh, on Saturday at the running back spot as well. I was happy for uh, Jacardier to at least get a carry. He's starting to come along. Uh, we got a couple of freshmen. We have our older guys that are um, not with us right now that we hope to get back, and, and Tyler was banged up a little bit. So we have to continue to keep pushing more things on all those guys uh, based a little bit on availability, but also based on their skill sets. Appreciate it, Chris. You bet. Thanks. Sully? Hey, Coach, uh, just kind of going back to Skyler, he kind of seems to have this ability when the biggest moments arise, he plays his best, sort of that X factor. Um, is that something that you saw early on in your tenure at K-State where you just kind of realized that he kind of could take it to that next level whenever he needs to? Well, he's a guy that plays really well when he's confident and when uh, we get him some early throws that uh, have success. And then he kind of feeds off that and um, he sees the field – much better now than when when we first got here, but that's a credit to him. He's he's really spent the time uh, with Coach Klein, Coach Mess, uh, learning our system and, and getting more comfortable and confident with changing the play, changing the protection, finding those matchups like we talked about before. And, and uh, I'm I'm excited for him. Um, he got through this last game, even though people saw him limping around. He he got through that game pretty well. Uh, and so if he's a healthy player, which he is right now. I think he can do some really special things. And so we have to continue to um, keep him protected, keep, try to keep him away from some of those hits. But uh, uh, excited about what he's done and, and what he's going to continue to do this season. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Adam Meyer. Coach, after the Arkansas State loss, the team leaders held those team meetings and they wanted to bring new energy 
into practice last week and then the way they improved and performed and came back against Oklahoma, just how pleased were you to see the improvement with the team and the team leadership? They did a great job, uh, Adam, and uh, it's not just, it just can't be one game. It has to be sustained. I mean, we need to do this for the long haul, and um, that's the challenge we made to our guys. Um, you know, just we, we didn't play well in week one, and, and, and you lose. We play well, played hard in week, two, in week two, and had an opportunity to win. We need to practice, prepare, do things right off the field. We need to do everything that we did the previous two weeks and maybe even amp it up a little bit to give ourselves a chance to be successful on Saturday. Does it mean you're going to win? No, but you have a lot better shot when, when you stack those great days, not only, not only on the field, but uh, as importantly off the field. And the sophomore defensive tackle, Jalen Pickle, that'll be on here in a little bit. What thoughts do you have to say on him? Excited because Jalen uh, missed the first game. So uh, he was a guy that we were looking forward to. You know, we had a lot of good players last year at the defensive line, and he didn't pick didn't get an opportunity this year. Uh, is going to be a big year for Pick, and he missed the first game, and I thought he did some really good things uh, against Oklahoma. He has great length, and uh, he was able to deflect the pass early in the game where Eli had the interception. He did some really good things in the run game, and he's going to benefit from a number of, uh, of those players we talked about earlier being exceptional pass rushers. So um, Pick needs to continue to work on his game, but I see great improvement from him. Michael. Yeah, Coach, I suppose it can be categorized as an overall ex execution issue. How do you address the third down conversion rate that you guys have had little success on so far this year? A couple things. One, um, continue to do a good job in protection. Um, try to avoid third and long um, because uh, that's, that's when defense obviously has an advantage. Uh, and then see, what, see what's working best, whether that is – um, you know, we're still learning some of our personnel, uh, and I like the guys we have, but what are some things that we can do differently with Josh Youngblood, uh, Philip Brooks, to the bigger guys outside like Seabass and Malik, to the backs like uh, Deuce and, and, and Keon and those guys, just continuing to, to learn um, what those kids can understand as well as uh, getting, in, getting those guys in positions to make plays on third down. But without question, we have to improve – uh, our third down efficiency, but part of that is we have to be better, and we always talk, talk about stay on schedule. We have to be better on first and second down so we can get manageable third downs. And is Josh Youngblood still kind of ramping up into things? Where do you see his play right now? He's getting better. Uh, he's improving all the time. Uh, another kid that missed the first game, and that's hard, guys. I mean, we have a number of kids that either have played that have played one game, whether it was a first or second, and so. Um, this is in missed all of all of spring summer. It's going to be a work in progress. You're going to see some really good things at times, and you're going to see some things that we know that we have to improve on. And, and we're working on those things every day, and the kids are working on those things every day. But uh, um, continuity is a big part of football, and it's really difficult when you don't have guys on a daily basis practicing. Derek. Yeah, Coach, to my untrained eye, Kimori Gaines seems like to take a big leap uh, against Oklahoma and play pretty well. Are you kind of rounding out that depth along the defensive line the way that you would like? Yeah, Kimori is the uh, person we need to continue to challenge and work with to be able to be a multi-position guy. He needs to be able to play outside and he needs to be able to play inside. I thought Kimori uh, made some really good plays for us on Saturday and was an impact. And uh, like I said before, we have so many defensive linemen that uh, – um, had an impact on that game, and he's just – he's one of them. Now, can we can we ramp up his role? Um, well, part of that, that is going to be Kamari. Can he make sure – and he understands, you know, two spots, not just the DN spot, but the D-tackle spot as well. But uh, uh, excited about uh, what we've seen with Kamari on just a limited basis. And in the secondary, you did mismatch and play guys, I guess, out of position to what they're accustomed to doing, with only so many probably returning that you didn't have for – Oh, you, do you anticipate that being the case again? That will keep throwing stuff up on the wall and, and seeing where they stick. And guys are going to be bouncing around again um, at practice. You, you know, you see one guy playing two or three different spots and, and you may settle in by the end of the week, but it's a work in progress. And, and we have some young, young players that are getting better that we're still trying to find the right spot for. And so um, we're, 
we're early in the season. I hate to say that in October, but we're early in the season. So we're going to continue to move pieces around until we find uh, the guys that fit their position best and that we gel the best. Thanks, Coach. You bet. Seren. Uh, Coach, uh, kind of along the lines of moving everybody around, um, is there a, a little bit of this? Uh, look, I, no one likes that we're in a pandemic, right? So let me preface that part. But, you know, is, is there a little bit of like mad scientist that you get to be that's maybe a little fun, a little, a little freedom, being able to try different things because you're not handcuffed to the routine? I know football is such a routine oriented and your schedule is ready a year in advance. But is there a little bit of this that maybe you and the coaches are, you know, kind of have a little fun and, and, you know, mixing and matching with this personnel. Yeah. But it wasn't a whole lot of fun when we were down 35, 14 and we were trying to mix and match <laughs> at the same time. So uh, that, that is a good point And we talk about it a lot, but you also need to get good at something and get a player comfortable and good at something. And we're struggling a little bit with that on offense and on defense of trying to do not necessarily too much because we're not doing too much, but when we have a guy learning multiple spots, that becomes too much for that player. But we do need to simplify offensively and defensively, and that's tough to do against high-powered offenses and against blitz-happy defenses, whatever it may be. And so there's kind of a happy medium in there um, that we need to continue to design stuff to get certain players the ball and design stuff defensively to get the guys in the best position. But it still comes down to those practice reps, and that's – that's the thing that's so tough is we went into a game with the guys practicing maybe 30 or 40, maybe even sometimes 50 at the most plays. And those guys are playing 70 in a game and they'd never even practice that many plays at that position. So um, it's something that we're aware of. We constantly talk about as a staff, talk to the players about, uh, uh, but uh, no, in the pandemic, this is difficult times. And then to go back to some your answer to John Kurtz when you're talking about the running backs and you said it'd still be by a committee, just what's your why? Why why is that? You know, a lot of coaches will tell you a guy needs six seven carries to kind of get in the rhythm. Why do you think the committee is is the way to go? Because there's guys that do things right now better than than other guys do. You know, some guys catch the ball better. Some guys protect better. Some guys um, run between the tackles. Some guys run outside. All those things. Some guys can handle more. But we're also in a, in a situation where it, it, at that position, all these guys have been out at some point. And so let's, let's throw the pandemic word out there again. Let's put all our eggs in one kid's basket. And all of a sudden, that kid goes down on Wednesday or Friday. Now we got to find a way to get all those reps to somebody that we could have split those reps up. And really, Sprint, that's at every position for us. We, we are trying to – you're trying to get the reps. Uh, sorry, a truck drove by and I couldn't hear myself. Um, <laughs> trying to get the reps evenly distributed so that when something does happen and a guy goes down, we don't, we can't say, "Oh boy, that kid's only had ten snaps. Now we got to play him 50. Not maybe a great answer, but that's kind of where we're at. It's oh, a good one. Thank you, Coach. You bet. All right, let's do these last three real quick, uh, starting with David Smale. Coach, I know it's tough to put a a, um, a tough loss behind you and focus on the upcoming opponent. How tough is it to put a big win like Saturday behind you and focus on Texas Tech? We better put it behind us in a hurry or we're going to um, not be ready on Saturday. And uh, what you did today is great. It pales in comparison to what you can do the next day. And right now we have to move on. And I thought our guys did a nice job of that on Monday. Uh, but that's been kind of our mantra um, for the last year plus is, you know, stack great days and, and don't worry about yesterday. Worry about today and, and let's win this dang day. And we're going to try to do that today. And, um, yeah, uh, it's, it's a concern. Uh, but sometimes when you lose a game, you, you get beat twice because you worry about that one on Tuesday and you worry about that one on Wednesday. And our kids did not do that. Uh, they went to the focus of Oklahoma. Now Oklahoma's in the rearview mirror and we have to focus on Texas Tech. And I'm, I'm confident in our leaders um, with coaches and with players uh, that will have a good week of preparation to give us an opportunity. Appreciate it. Ryan Black. Hey, Chris, I, I know as, as, as media members and, and fans, you know, we tend to just look at the stats and we see that, you know, Malik has one catch for, for 27 yards in the first two games. 
But where, where do you guys as a coaching staff view, view that, view that how he's done through these first two? He's doing well. We know he can be better. We know he knows he can be better. He knows he can be more of an impact and uh, we'll continue to, to keep finding ways to get him the football. Um, you know, last year we were really beat up at that position all year long. Uh, this year, when you throw the running backs in there and you throw Briley Moore in there, we have more bodies to, to throw the ball around to. And so um, everybody's going to have their day. And that's part of the team concept that we keep trying to preach. It's, it's not about me. It's about the team. And how can we help the team win? And if that means he catches one ball but has three great blocks and, and decoys two guys out so that, that Deuce can be one-on-one, -on -one, uh, that's what uh, he's going to have to do for us to win. That's what Malik's okay with us doing. Everybody wants the football, but everybody also wants to win. And I'm telling you, the locker room's a lot more fun when you win, whoever, no matter who catches the football, as you opposed to lose. And then, you know, at the moment, you guys are leading the Big 12 in a couple of categories. I know you'd rather not, and that's penalties and penalty yards per game. I know in, 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 in an ideal world, you know, you would never commit any penalties, but but what's like a reasonable expectation that you just tell the guys, hey, guys, let's not have more than three or five per game? I mean, what, what do you do with that? We don't want to have any pre-snap penalties, and that's what we yeah. have to be cleaned up. That's the bottom line. A, a holding, a pass interference, some of those things, yeah, those are going to those are gonna happen. Uh, but the pre-snap penalties, without question, we have to improve on. Last one here, Arnie. Yeah, I just wanted to go back to uh, my own. Okay. Yeah, just wanted to go back to the the secondary. Um, I think the two guys, main guys you moved were AJ and uh, J Mac. Is that kind of by design? They're kind of the veteran guys. Yeah, put more on their plate. They've seen more football. Uh, probably can handle more of a game plan. Um, trying to find the best spots for the best guys that are available and try to, um, you know, for the younger players, limit some of the the learning. Limit some of the the things that can go into a, a detailed game plan. And so those two kids have played the most football. And so those are, those were two easy moves at that time. I don't know if we'll stay that way throughout the long haul. Obviously everything depends on the availability of guys, but uh, I thought both those two played exceptionally well for not playing the position uh, other than on Saturday, a handful of times in practice, but in game situations, since we've been here, those two guys played really, really well for not playing the position. Also, uh, some teams, the safety positions are fairly similar. Are there, how, how big a difference is it with switching between the two safety spots not, for you not, guys? Not a big difference for, for J-Mac. Uh, you see the field differently um, from the strong to the free. But, uh, you know, the guys that are really good in, in our system uh, could play the safe, both safeties and the nickel spot. The really good corners could play both corners and the nickel spot. and the more we can have guys do that, and that's what we're trying to do right now in practice. We have young guys playing in different spots all the time, trying to find the best spot for those guys so that they can help us and be an impact whenever their time is called.